See that little plate swinging around back there? Okay, so I've got quite a few projects on this bench at the same time usually and right now is no different so you'll uh, just have to live with me. I organized enough room to not mess up what else I've got staged and laid out here. This is the new upper. It's the RF-15 Radical Upper. Um, it's pretty much the same as the other. Um, the barrel seems to be slightly improved, slightly not improved. I went over the, uh, the gas port being drilled right on a rifling land. This one came with this muzzle brake instead of the flash hider, the A2, um, which I prefer. Um, flash hiders, I don't have a severe decrease in accuracy from them. I do have a slight increase in accuracy when I run a flash hider instead of a bare end or just even a thread protector on here. But the muzzle brake is, in theory, a much more accurate design than a flash hider uh, because it affects the pressure on the base of the bullet all the way around the circumference um, of the of the bullet base so anyway this came with a muzzle brake does make it significantly louder but i mean if the recoil of a 223 ever bothered anybody anyway but it is significantly less recoil when i shoot the thing it like it literally feels like shooting a little 22 or a 17 or something um so i got into that i didn't like my my 73 grain ELD match loads, um, that was with Accurate 2460, and it was a close to max or over max charge from 223 Remington load data. Um, it was a lightly compressed charge, and it was a lot. That, that's a lot of poop. That was a, that's a double base spherical propellant, and it was compressed. It, it was a lot. Um, and it shot like crap, and it used to used to shoot like this. You know, I used to, um, you know, regularly get some pretty amazing, here's this one, five, seven. I used to get some pretty amazing groups out of that with the other upper. And so I know the bullets are capable of it. I know that these barrels uh, don't hate these bullets. So today I just made a quick load ladder. Um, I went all the way from this was just a warm up. I went from clean. I like to start clean so that way I know what the barrel is going to do, uh, you know, when I take it out. Um, so I started way down here, uh, 21 point, and I, this is accurate 2495, which is typically, I think, known as a 308 powder. Um, it's a big, big extruded powder. Um, and so you'd think you can't fit a ton of it in the case. It's fast and it's single based. Um, faster than 8208 XBR. Um, faster than Ramshot TAC. Faster than Varget. Um, faster than that accurate 2460. It's fast. So started at 21.2. This is a four shot group because I had one set that was going to be three and instead of three and five i did four and four here because this is the lowest end of the ladder i wasn't super concerned with it but we've got a four shot group into pretty close to an inch here and then we've got a four shot group under an inch what's it worth in life if we don't so that's about a darn near a 0.80 so 0.8 inch group, 21.5, 21.8. This is Hornady's max charge with their bullet with this powder. So uh, proceed at your own risk here. But this was their max charge. Not super, not super exciting. You get above their max. And the reason I was willing to go above their max. Oh, here's a. Here's a kernel of that powder. Of course it won't focus. That's silly. I'm gonna, I'll get a cup of it and show you what it looks like. 
Um, the reason I was willing to go over their max is because I have an old Western powders book and I also have an accurate powders book and both of them show significantly higher charges for the same case length in same or similar bullets. Um, this one, it actually showed for a heavier bullet. The Western powders showed for a 75 grain boat tail hollow point seated to 2.260 inches. So I was willing to go up. This is also under an inch. Not that exciting, but what we've got is four in one hole and one flyer, which could have been me, right? Then we come over here. There's some chicken scratch on here because I had to go back to my notes to figure out. I flip flopped these two. This is 22.4 grains of that 24.95. And all of this was at, from here, I set it at 2.260 inches of seating depth, overall length, and then I didn't touch it. And these charges got compressed, and so these bullets grew but they still fit in a P mag magazine in a plastic standard. I run for pretty near everything. I run these little 10 shot um, Magpul P mags. I really like them. Um, I shoot off the bench a lot. I do a ton of riding around with these in a pickup. It's legal to do that here. And so I just, I really like tens. I keep some 30s loaded, stashed everywhere around, so that way they're handy. I like these 20s a lot, but the 10s are what I use the most for everything. Um, but, so as these cases grew, they all, even the longest one, even this one, fit in the magazine. So they were over magazine length, but they fit. Um, so anyway, we came to 22.4 grains. These I measured on a website and you know where you take a photo and um, take the measurements and I also measured them with the calipers to verify and I'm really growing to trust that website and um, it's as accurate as you make photos really so I mean maybe a tenth of an inch off Maybe not. Pretty close. Um, but this measured out to 0.64 inches, 0.61 MOA. And my math pencils out to somewhere between, I've done it twice now, and I, I get in my head about algebra. Check, double check, triple checked. And, you know, chronoed. We got an average of 27.77 here, but... The math said it should have been 2740. That so it's odd. Here, this is 22.7 grains. This is the Western Powders published max. And this is a 0.835 inch group or 0.8 MOA. And my average velocity, I didn't do math for this, my average velocity was 2785. This is over published maximum. And the only reason I'm willing to do this is because the Western Powders book has two different sets of load data. One for 223 Remington and another one for 556 NATO. This powder, 2495, was not in the 556 NATO portion of the book. It was in 223. I presume they didn't put 556 data in this because you literally can't jam pack anymore in the case. These loads were crunchy from literally the very, very start. From all the way back here, you could hear powder crunching. Up here, they were really crunchy. It was hard to get these bullets seated, but they were not deformed. I think a lot of it is just powder crunching into where it's tight in there. I don't think shit is crunching to powder. It, I just... It don't feel like that much force when you're seating bullets. Um, so anyway, this being 223 data, I was willing to go up three more tenths of a grain. I'm glad I did. That's a 0.529 inch group. There's an extra zero there. Let's go ahead and make ourselves look like a little bit less of an ignoramus. I already have a hard enough time being an ignoramus in this world. 
We got an average velocity of 2,790 feet per second, which out of an 18 inch barrel, that is cooking. That is flat zipping right there. And 0 0.50 MOA, excellent group. That flyer literally could have been me. This scope, this is, this is when Vortex first came out. They don't even make the reticle that's in this anymore. And it's a diamond back. It was the cheapest junk that Vortex made in like 2012 or 13 or something like that. Incredibly cheap optic. I'd be willing to bet that with my PST, with my Viper scope, I, this, we can make this a one holer. I just don't want to put that nice optic on here. I've got it on the 308. That's where it's home is going to be. This is a coyote gun, not a groundhog gun, you know? Um, but that's going to be my load. I have no idea what it's going to do on the top end when it gets hot next year. I don't particularly care. I don't foresee it coming completely apart just because of some weather. And so that finishes my, my review, my load that I said I was going to fix. It usually doesn't go this well. I'm going to load up probably a 20 shot verification, verify this load and we're off to the races. And I'm zeroed here with my VMAX. This is presumably my long range load. And so basically a point of impact shift, just a little bit high consistently. I am super happy with that. That's, it don't get much better. So anyway, thanks for coming out. That's the load. Um, the data I will post in the end screen.